All right, so welcome back everybody. My name is Andrew and you're watching the Kelly's Country Life. And as the video title says, today's episode is all about plumbing. So before we can go to tapping into any of the lines today, we're gonna to install toilets, we're gonna to install vanities, kitchen sink, dishwasher, everything that we can possibly get into. So I've opened up some drain valves on the hot and cold water side on the outside of the house, bled the system down, but the problem is there's still water held in these pipes up in the house. So y'all have seen that I've did this before. I have my little pancake compressor hooked up with some fittings that I bought off of Amazon here that will actually hook up to my washer and dryer hot and cold water hookup. I've got my regulator set to where this might, might be putting off one to two PSI. I don't really want to pressurize the system heavily on this. And very important, I've also cut off the valves entering the water heater on the outside. I don't want to shove or force flow the exact opposite direction through my water heater. No idea what that would do. So I have a cold and hot water drain on the opposite side of those cutoffs, ready to blow what little bit of water we can out in the yard. And the reason being, we're about to cut a bunch of low pipes down for the toilet and vanity, and I don't want them draining water out in the house, uh, constantly getting my seams wet that we're about to glue. So this is a quick way to kind of make easy work of that. So let me thread this on. We'll blow these out one by one, and we can start cutting some pipes and installing. All right, just went outside and checked. That worked beautiful. Blew the water right out, not at high pressure, which is not what we're wanting. Now let's move over to the cold water side. And I guess to start this plumbing episode off, we're gonna start right here at the washer and dryer hookups. So when my inspector come through a while back and did my rough end plumbing inspection, he told me there was two areas that he was gonna require that I install what's called hammer arresters. So what these are, these will actually take the line hammer out of pipes in the system. Anywhere that you have a fast acting valve, say electronically controlled valve in a wash and dryer that's bringing water in and then cuts off. You ever seen you do that quickly with a garden hose and it'll kind of shimmy and shake? Same thing can happen with pipes in your wall and it's called line hammer. These little assisters right here are hammer arresters actually helped take that away. And he told me right here is one area that he was gonna require them, as well as on both of our toilets. Now, I'm not disputing the fact that, they, hey, they probably could be used in other places, like say, an ice maker, whatever else you can think of. But we're gonna go with what the inspector said. This is two areas he said he would be looking. So all we have to do is hook these right up, bought these right off of Amazon, really easy to install. And now they point straight down and we can hook our washer hose hookups here, our hot and cold. That simple, let's move on to something else. All right, so since we just drained all the lines, well, we might as well start with those, especially being that I wanna glue a bunch of fittings on and allow this glue time to set up and cure before I do any pressure testing or water testing. So I've got me a mess set out here on the counter. I bought a bunch of these, uh, cut off valves right here and the appropriate fittings that will thread into them. So I'm gonna take some of this liquid Teflon tape, which I absolutely love far more than the regular Teflon tape, coat all of these threaded fittings. Now's the time to go ahead and put all your connections together. You don't wanna do it in the wall where you're having to really screw this on and then wrench on it with a pipe. You can wind up breaking your, your PVC fittings, your CPVC, or twisting off your pecs, anything else. If you can do it on the counter now and then go glue it on, you're gonna get a much better fit and you're potentially not gonna crack something. So that's all I'm gonna do. Put all these cutoff valves together and then we can go start cutting off pipe, installing them where all the vanities, toilets, everything else is. All right, it is just too hard to record in this little bathroom. But what I did here, was I've got a quarter turn cutoff valve. I have my uh, hammer arrestor right there and a hose that goes straight to the bottom side of the toilet. Very easy hookup right there. What I'm probably gonna do is paint um, all these fittings and that hammer arrestor the same color as the wall to let all that kind of blend in and just vanish. Underneath the sink, very straightforward, two quarter turn cutoff valves for hot water on the left, cold on the right and we'll get to the uh, actual drain here in just a little bit. I wanna go ahead and get all the pressurized pipe done. Now this is the laundry room, so we definitely wanted a big laundry sink in here that we could wash animals in, 
wash sheets, clothes, Tiffany can do some scrubbing if she needs to do some stain removal or spot removal. So I'm just gonna cut these caps off. And I should also mention, I am using a cutter on CPVC, but this is fresh new CPVC. I probably wouldn't use this style cutter on old CPVC that could be a little brittle. Doesn't bother me at all on brand new stuff. And because I forgot to tape up all my connections before sheetrock, shame on me there, I'm just taking some pliers and gently going around the pipe and it's taking paint and spackling right off that we have on there from the sheetrock. I'm not trying to actually scar the pipe up, but I'm just taking, I think it's 220 grit sandpaper. I always try to sand my joints anyways. Quickly go around right here. Just get everything nice and clean so we can get a good blue joint. Now because I'm using CPVC, I am using the Odie Yellow Flow Guard Gold. This is that one step glue right here. Amazing stuff. I've never ever had a joint fail with it. Let me don't talk too good about it. Today will be the day, won't it? And also, I've left my pipe sticking out just far enough. You really won't see it back here behind the laundry sink. But I've left it far enough that if I, for some reason, had to redo one of these joints, I can cut and redo them one more time before I'd have to go on the wall and redo some plumbing. Cutting off right next to the wall and then gluing your joint straight to it, it looks good. But if you have any issues, any leaks, any problems, and need to replace this threaded end that I'm gluing on right now, you need to leave a little bit of pipe, at least I feel like you do, so you can redo your joint. Things are subject to fail, it happens. <clears throat> now you're not really gonna be able to see me work in this vanity, but I wanna talk about this part of the room because a lot of people called onto something a while back, and I discussed it one time many months ago. But as you can see in this wall, there is not a water a tube coming out or PVC, CPVC coming out to feed the toilet. My plan has always been because I knew the vanity was going to be so close to the toilet and we're putting a trash can here, I'm just going to come out the side of the vanity with a stainless hose and connect up to the toilet itself. So I'm putting my hammer arrester and separate cutoff valve inside of this cabinet for the toilet, another cutoff valve for the sink should I ever have to service them for any reason. But a lot of people are curious about that. And the reason I did that is it's all my fault. When I framed this wall out, I did not frame it out big enough. I framed it out of two by fours like all the other interior walls, not thinking that running a two inch vent line up here, all the three quarter inch CPVC plumbing, it had the wall so packed tight, it was just gonna be a nightmare to try to run another pipe and another fitting over here behind the toilet. I don't know why the plumber didn't run a through slab uh, CPVC pipe right there like he did in the other bathroom. I just didn't catch it but I should have framed this wall out of two by sixes to run all that vent piping and everything else. I didn't catch it till it was too, too late. So I just made a conscious decision that I'd run the line outside the vanity and I knew it would be covered by the trash can. You won't really see it. All right, something that I highly recommend y'all do, whether it's an old unit or a new one, things can happen and water is so destructive in a home. So I pulled the dishwasher outside. This is actually an older unit that was given to us by a friend and I want to test it. He's already tested himself, but he gave it to us like over a year ago or about a year ago, I guess. And with all the moving back and forth, I want to make sure connection hasn't come loose or a hose has a dry rotted crack, something like that. So I have got it plugged into an extension cord outside. Lowe's sells little elbow adapters that hooks right to the hoses on this and converts it to where it'll hook up to a garden hose adapter. They're like four or five bucks. They're right there in the same section where you get the stainless hoses for dishwashers, vanity sinks, things like that. It's worth getting and even trying on a new unit. I've heard horror stories from some of y'all that uh, y'all know people that have had entire basements and rooms flooded out from these because, well, they had a crack in the entire bottom pan. It wasn't just a leaking hose, but what if you do have a leaking hose? so much easier for me to test this outside, make sure there's no leaks, then run inside and install it before it fills itself up and then I discover I've got a heck of a problem.
All right, so while I'm letting that dishwasher run out there, I'm also running it through the heat and sanitizing cycle because heat will cause things to actually expand. If there is any cracks or gaps, that's a good way to notice leaks. But while that's out there running for quite a while, let's go ahead and put the toilet in. So the kit comes with these T-head bolts right here. By the way, I'm putting in an American Standard Champion toilet. If y'all watched my last episode, I talked about we wanted an extremely high flushing and capable toilet. These new water saving toilets are horrible about plugging up and not flushing much toilet paper. So I knew for sure I wanted one that would flush well. And the Champion is a highly rated toilet. Purchased it from Lowe's. But it come with a wax ring and T-headed bolts. So I'm gonna drop these bolts down into this ring that we installed in another episode. I'll make sure to include that video down in the description if you would like to see how I installed the actual toilet flange. And then it comes with a couple of, well, I'm just gonna call them nuts, that you'll screw on. And basically what this will do is cinch and pull the bolt up to keep it upright while you set the toilet down. These really don't do nothing more than to actually hold this up and support it. Otherwise your bolts could fall over and kind of go all over the place on you. And I am gonna go with what's called a Corky, that's the manufacturer toilet flange seal right here. You can use the provided wax ring that actually comes with these toilets or you can purchase them separately. That's typically what most people do. It's just a solid hunk of concave wax that you seal into the bottom of the toilet and then it seals down into the toilet flange. I find them messy, disgusting to replace down the road. Um, and sometimes they want to fall out of the toilet when you're trying to set it in place, don't want to seal up well. So I'm experimenting trying one of these new rubber type seals right here. So the concave portion drops down into the toilet flange and I've already installed one toilet. So I know to use this thicker ring right here. There's also another provided ring if you need to double stack these in case your toilet uh, and flange sit very far apart from each other. But this is plenty to seal up in my toilet. Actually, it's about as max as I can get away with. So that's it. We'll take the toilet, slide it down over those two bolts. They're nice and secure. With those little tabs that we put on them, they shouldn't fall over, slide out, nothing. And as you can see, the toilet is rocking and sitting off the floor quite a bit because it is lifted up a lot on this kind of rubber seal. So this toilet kit comes with hand tightened nuts and that is critical. Anytime you're tightening down on porcelain, you really need to be careful about using a wrench and really torquing down nuts anywhere on this toilet. You can crack porcelain relatively easy. So I'm hand tightening only. You can tell that's why they provided these. Now, because I'm compressing a seal, I'll jump back and forth from one side to the other as I tighten. That way I get even compression and distribution across this seal. It's also a good time to get your toilet nice and squared up with the back wall. Now, because this is kind of a rubber type ring, it'll compress slowly. So you can sit on top of the toilet, put pressure on it as you tighten down. You can come back in an hour or two. Chances are it's settled some. You can tighten the nuts a little more. You can also do it next day until you get the rock completely out and know that you have fully compressed the seal. All right, next it's time to install the water tank up top, but we need to put a provided seal right here. And that seal looks just like that. That'll seal this water tank down to the toilet itself. And there is two screws that now push down through the water tank, through the toilet itself, and we'll tighten some nuts on the bottom of them. And they compress some rubber gaskets in here to seal. Two nuts come with the toilet itself and a hand tightening device. Again, hand tighten. Don't crack your porcelain. And those two screws I was just telling you about that come through the tank. We're gonna get some nuts on those, tighten this up. And we're gonna jump back and forth, tighten from one side to the other again. It's at this point, there is a hose connection right here. That's where you can hook up should you have a water supply line coming out of the wall. Again, I'm gonna come out the side of the vanity with my stainless hose and hook up to that. That fills it. 
And now is also a time to make some adjustments if you need to. If you look at this setting right here on this cutoff valve, you can lower it for less water usage or raise it all the way up for more flushing power, more usage in here. There's a couple of caps provided that go over these nuts that I tightened. Like I said, I'll pop those off occasionally, see if I can get them tightened anymore over the next day or two. And now is the time to install our lid. All right, two plastic screws are provided with some wing nuts that go on the bottom. And we're not looking to over tighten here either. All right, so now we just put our top on. And all that's left to do is connect that water hose, check for leaks, flush and test it out. Really easy to install a toilet. Well, the dishwasher is still out there doing its thing. So we might as well go ahead and start putting some faucets in here. Now I have never done this three position style. I've always been used to faucets that were all in one, but this shouldn't be overly complicated. These handles also come with these kind of brass nuts that you can hand tight and then have screws that you tighten down with a screwdriver. Now I'm gonna be very careful when I do that. That's to keep these handles from slipping out of position. That's kind of a bad thing about this style. All built in one, handles can't really spin around. But I'm gonna be careful when I tighten these down for the simple fact of these tops break relatively easy. How do we know? Well, the first one of these that we went and picked up, the top was broken all the way across and we had to return it. It's a relatively interesting design for this weird shaped washer that goes around here and sandwiches up underneath along with that nut. All right, so now it's time to put our drain tube in. As you can see, it's got a concave washer that goes up from underneath. And this is your top section here. Now it's important underneath this to either put like some plumber's putty or some really good quality silicone to seal that out. So once that drops down in the sink, you get a nice, good, tight seal. All right, so we had a heck of a time finding a 24 inch vanity with drawers, they just hardly don't exist. So we stumbled across a couple of them, wound up finding one for a really good deal. You get what you pay for typically. As you can see, it is the old press board type of wood, but again, we had to struggle so much to find drawers. This is gonna be Tiffany's little powder room, and I am going to build her a table off over here with a little stool underneath. We're putting a four foot mirror up here. Now she can do her makeup and get ready in here. And we wanted the drawer so she could put some makeup and other things in there. But long story short, this is a very low vanity. Tiffany does not like how low that it is. It's lower than anything else in the house. So she's asked me to try to lift it up. We need to do something relatively quick here because I have a plumbing inspection coming up in a couple of days. So we're gonna use my old friend, brick molding. I have some of it. I think it'll look good down here at the bottom. It'll lift this up quite a bit and then you still have the top on there to kind of get it back to your standard height level. And it'll raise up the little uh, table that I'm gonna put over here for her to sit underneath. We don't want that to be too terribly low right there. So that's the next task. Let's see if we can get this lifted up. She wants it about three quarters of an inch to an inch. The brick molding I think is two inches. So the more the better, let's go ahead and try it out. So this is one of the couple of spots in the house that I did not finish out trim. It's all loose, still needs to be nailed in because I knew I was gonna be taking this vanity in and out. Now, yes, before anybody gets to hollering at the camera that, hey, brick molding is made for the outside of doors. I understand that. What I love about brick molding and how I like using it for things like this, it is such a wide trim. It's very stable for something like a cabinet that's actually gonna sit on top of this right now. So yes, I know this is not its intended use. All 
All right, so let's start fitting these pieces in here and see if this looks absolutely stupid and I need to try something else or if we can make this look halfway decent and accomplish what we want here. All right, so here it is complete. I still have to adjust the doors and all the gaps out that you're seeing there, but it, it looks good. I even decided to bring it out and not put it flush with the cabinet so it would actually look like feet. I'm really happy with the way that it turned out. I'm going to paint a black piece and put in there and lower down to the floor so dust and debris can't go underneath. That was a concern for Tiffany's but I'm still gonna leave the toe kick area. But overall, I think that turned out rather good. Need to seal this gap up along the wall too, which I guess once we kind of build the seating area there, you're not even gonna be able to look underneath and see much of nothing. So now it's two inches higher, a little more than she was expecting. She should be very happy with that. All right, I'll be honest with y'all. It has been extremely difficult to record putting in faucets and all because well these rooms are just so tight and I can't get a camera underneath where I'm doing all the plumbing. I have already did the majority of plumbing in this house. So about to pop this last faucet in a little bit of a uh, plumbing underneath and I guess I'll just show you all the finished product because uh, again it's just impossible to get a camera down in there while I'm working and get y'all any good footage. Okay, so I think to wrap up this plumbing episode, well, we'll make pretty much the last plumbing connection in the house, other than once we get to CO, we'll move the washing machine in and literally hook up two connections. No big deal there. But we need to put an ice maker. This uh, freezer refrigerator combo did not come with one, but it looks like they've already got it set up, everything ready to go. So I ordered this Whirlpool ice maker from Lowe's and it has a little cover in the back that comes right out after you remove one screw. There's your fill tube and your connection for the harness right here. For some reason, this comes with a ridiculously long harness that you can't really cut. So that's gonna be a little aggravating to deal with. But there is two screws sticking out the side of the freezer right there. And there is a little plug down here that I'm gonna remove. It looks like you can put another screw in. Actually, I'm gonna use the same screw that I took out from up here. Looks like it'll thread in there. So, all you do is take this ice maker. It's got drop-in hangable slots that hang on these screws that are already preset out a certain distance. And I'll just plug this little connector in back here and hang the ice maker. All right, that took a few seconds, literally. Now our ice maker is installed, ready to go. Drip tube is where it needs to be in the back. Harness, I was able to get out of the way. Now we need to pull the refrigerator itself out because we need to hook up the water line. So if you look on the back side, Whirlpool luckily already ran the water tube and down there is a threaded connection and right beneath it, if you can see that little blue valve, that's exactly what that is. Some kits, you have to install that valve, pop the cover off and put a water valve in there, make your connection. Looks like this one is already plumbed up and ready. So all I needed was just the inside ice maker. All right, so we'll pop the cap off the top of that little solenoid or water valve, whatever you want to call it. And then I bought a braided ice maker hose. I find these to be a little more reliable, especially the compression connections with the rubber in it than purchasing just the tube itself and making your own compression fittings. Seems like those, if you over tighten just a little too much, they always leak. These pre-made hoses, no more than they cost, feel like they have a better connection. And I bought a long enough hose that I can go ahead and hook up my water connection and leave the refrigerator out testing everything. I can always curl up whatever I don't need. As far as in here goes, I have a built in the wall cutoff valve for the ice maker. I'm gonna turn that on and just uh, check for leaks. All right, so I'll let this sit here for a while, see if any leaks develop. If not, I can curl the hose up a little more, roll everything right back in 
And that is our last plumbing connection for the house. So check this out, y'all. Sink is working. This fancy little nozzle here that does all kinds of sprays. It's magnetized. This is a really nice sink and Kohler faucet combo. And shame on me for not telling y'all about these. These were on sale for $2.79. With the mat, it comes with a bamboo cutting board. Um, the Kohler faucet, everything was $279. Drain kit come with it. Uh, stainless sink, I mean, killer deal. I think they're still only $349 and this is at Costco. Heck of a deal. You need to look into getting that because a lot of faucets or just the sink cost what the entire combination did. All right, so excuse my plumbing here. I had to wind up using some 22 and a half degree fittings to get the proper angle, but I made me a clean out port here so you can unscrew that cap, clean out should you ever have a plug. We have the dishwasher coming in right here, and then I have a cutoff valve for the dishwasher and the sink underneath here. By the way, our plumbing runs out of the house right out there to the other side of the lift and porch, and I also have a clean out port back there for easy access. I've done run the dishwasher a couple of different times in the house. I still have the bottom plate off, as you can see, been shining underneath with a light. The only leak I've had throughout this entire plumbing was the hose for the dishwasher. Turns out one end was missing the rubber seal. So I had to make a quick trip to town there. I just installed a brand new hose. Like I said, I've done run several cycles through this, let it drain, let it pump and fill. No leaks nowhere. I'll leave that cover off and look underneath it for the next couple of days. All right, nothing fancy here, just your typical drain hoses. I'm gonna clean up and get out of the way, probably screw to the back wall. I've got my hammer rester in here. I looked up, you can mount them any direction you want. I have two separate cutoff valves, one for the toilet, one for the cold water on the sink, and then hot water for the sink itself. And ultimately what I decided to do, I'm still going to straighten that up as well. I came out the side of the cabinet with a little decorative piece down there. My stainless hose is run right to the toilet and uh, we're gonna eventually put a trash can right here so you're not even gonna be able to see the hose. That was the best I could come up with being there was just too much going on in this two by four wall right here to run plumbing over. And I'm still not 100% sure why the plumber originally did not run up through the slab for the toilet, but all that was discovered too late. I framed out of a two by four wall, probably should have did two by six, so I could have uh, run me an extra line over to here. But that was my kind of fix for the uh-oh that happened there, and I'm perfectly fine with it. Like I said, once you get a trash can slid in there, that's never even gonna be visible. So toilets are hooked up. I have been checking them left and right for leaks. Man, what a flush. That water is gone in a second and a half. So I think I'm really looking forward to these uh, champion toilets here. The few people that seem to have them, love them. Say they flush and hardly ever plug. All right, so moving into Tiffany's uh, little powder room here, still a lot of work to do here. I have to uh, do some touch-up painting, have still have to do some more caulking there and sealing up. We still have to build her, her sitting area over here. And I've got to adjust all the doors. They look all out of whack, but they do have fully adjustable hinges. So I've got this all hooked up, but I'm still letting the glue set up. This is the last thing that I just done here. Not a whole lot going on there. You can easily break that down. Should you need to unplug the system, I made sure this one had uh, a piece that you could unthread and run a snake right in there. By the way, there's also another clean out just outside the house behind this to run back into the house. Two cutoff valves. Very simple and straightforward there. And I've already shown the toilet off here. It's got its hammer rester outside. Some people are probably gonna ask, why did you put a hammer rester outside and not in the wall? Well, from what I've read, these eventually waterlog, wear out. They got like a piston in them and I wanted it outside so I could change it. And I can't remember if I've already mentioned this episode or not, but I'm just going to paint the piping and the hammer rester itself the same color as this wall. So it should blend right in. And a lot of people keep asking, why do we have plug-ins beside our toilets? That was actually recommended by our inspector whenever he came many, many months ago and I was just starting rough in electrical. He said, hey, you may wanna go ahead and put a plug-in behind the toilet in case you ever need a bidet or if you ever need nursing assistance down the road. I'm not sure if there's plug-ins or tools or things that they can use there to help clean you up if you need that kind of assistance. But he said, put a plug there. 
uh, you can't go wrong. So there's one behind each toilet and each bathroom just for that reason. And I apologize, like I said, I, I know I just did not record well on this. This is more of a show and tell video than it was a how to. It's just so difficult for that camera to catch any of what I'm doing. Everything's in the way. And I didn't want to just sit there and talk to a camera and you couldn't actually see what was going on. But I went ahead and installed a laundry sink in, well, the laundry room. We knew when we wanted this, this is most likely where we're gonna wash our little dogs or any little dogs that we have in the future. Plus if she needs to take clothes out and spot clean, we have a nice big sink here. Water runs great here. I've already done tested all that. And we got us a laundry sink with the little spray wand. This would be excellent for dogs. So we can wash them in the shower or right out here if they're small enough. Our little guy can definitely fit in this. So whoo, it has been nonstop around here. This took me about a day and a half to do. That's including two trips back to town to the hardware stores for the unexpected leaking hose right there. And then a few other fittings that, hey, once you get into it, you realize, oh yeah, I forgot to pick that up or I really do need that. That's inevitable, especially being a first time home builder here. I can't think through every single scenario, although I try to do the best job that I can. So man, having running water, that's awesome. I will say that this has felt more like, this has been more of a shocker than I think even the framing when we first put that up and you could see, oh, this is turning into a house. This realistically now feels like it's happening. I mean, we're this close to a CO. So all that's left, I've got, I already got an appointment with the inspector. Next episode, we're gonna jump outside and we'll slap some lights in real quick, wrap up all the electrical, and he already has an appointment in two days to come out here to do a full walkthrough, check the plumbing, do final electrical, uh, final HVAC. I'm, I kind of saved everything for him. And um, I'm already right in the process of scheduling what's called a blower door test or a leak test for the home where they pressurize it or vacuum it put some sophisticated equipment up and see how leaky your home is. I don't expect any problems there. I think those are the last things that I need to get our CO. With the exception of, I'm still curious about what he's gonna tell me with a loft, if I need to build some sort of quick temporary railing or since there's no technical stair access up there, if it's good as is. So fingers crossed, I get some really good news here toward the end of the week. And maybe by first of next week, I'll have y'all video out, let y'all know if we're moving toward getting our CO or not. Keep in mind, his inspection that he's about to come do is about to give me the thumbs up, yes or no, on if I can call the power company and pull permanent power. So between the power company and getting the blower door test, I still have two more things to schedule. Then hopefully I can get a signed piece of paper saying, yeah, you can move into your home. Now with that said, yes, everybody looks around. There's things I'm not happy with, like some of the trim and gaps, I'm gonna go back and redo. Still have three different windows to trim out. We still have a ton of stuff to do. We still have to bed out the laundry closet, the pantry, um, the laundry room, the regular closet. All that stuff has to be built out, but we can do that while we live in here. We are used to living out of a camper and things in storage. It's just gonna get moved over here. And as one room gets complete, we'll put all the clothing up. As the pantry gets com complete, we'll bring everything over from the shop and put all of our canned goods and pots and pans up. Same thing with the linens. So it's gonna be a slow process. But as far as all the trim and everything else, the bedroom is pretty much complete other than knocking a window out. We can put a bed and all in there. We're at the point that we're not making a mess in the house anymore, and it's gonna be nice to go ahead and get on out of that camper, get over here, plus I'd like to get that camper for sale as well, so we could use some of that money to put right back into the house. All right, no rambling on, hopefully you enjoyed the plumbing. Sorry it wasn't kind of a how-to or nuts and bolts type of thing. It just didn't work out, and I really needed to keep my head underneath these cabinets nose to the grindstone as they say, because the inspector's on his way and I have to have all this leak tested passed for me before it'll ever pass for him. And so far, everything looks great.